Hey, good morning. Uh, this is another update on the uh, Southern Pacific 1744 here in Niles Canyon. Today we're putting some tires back on the wheels center that we had machined up in Sacramento. We've got a whole bunch of guys out here working. You can kind of see behind me, we've been setting up. These tires were ordered and they came from back east. It's a, uh, they need to be rolled. They're steel ingots and they roll them into an iron wheel. And then once they're to the proper dimension, they machine them to the final dimensions that we need. And we measure the diameters of all the driver centers after they were machined. And then there's some other dimensions that we need to get, which are key because the big thing putting these back on is you need the back dimensions between the two tires to be correct so that your wheels are engaged and the flanges are in the right location. And I say if you get the flange off by a quarter inch or a half inch either way, you can imagine that number one, it's not going to fit on the gauge of four feet, eight and a half inches. And, and if it did, because there is tolerance in there, you would have problems going through switches and stuff like that. You, you would end up having derailment issues. So that's a key dimension. A lot of, you know, they're big, big diameter, 63 inch tires, and we're taking measurements down in the hundredth and the thousandths of an inch. So today we're gonna heat one or two of them up and put them on the wheel center. They're getting set up. They got the tire and the fire ring up there. And then we're going to start heating it up and then we'll push it on. They do expand enough, so we shouldn't have to use a lot of force to get it on the wheel center. So that's kind of the story today. There's going to be a lot of action. We got Chuck running the crane and Charles and Jack and Harold, Doug and Henry. It's a hot day at Brightside, and we're going to add more heat firing up the propane on the, the tires to heat them up. So we look forward to getting this done. There will be one more driver done, and then we'll have one more to go. Each one of these tires we ordered were machined to fit on a specific wheel center. And the diameters, we tried to get them mostly the same. There's an index, there's a small cut in the wheel and the dimension between those two indexes is key. So each one of these tires, that's a different number. And that's what sets our gauge once everything's tight on the wheel. So we're heating the tire, we're using propane to heat it up. Can't really see the flame because of course we're burning correctly so it's pretty much a blue or clear flame. The diameter will expand about a quarter of an inch and that way we can get it over the wheel center. Get it set, clamp it down and then when it cools off, once it shrinks, that's what holds the tire on the wheel. And for the lifetime of the locomotive that these tires will be on, that's why they'll stay on there because they're shrunk fit on the wheel. If you run on the independent hard and you heat up that tire, if it gets hot enough, the tire will move on the center. And that happened where it was running before. And they added extra shims to take up that tolerance and tighten the tire back up. But we wanted to make sure it's correct because we're going to be running it a long time. We want to fix it while it's apart right now. So the next thing we're going to do is we'll take the propane off once it gets hot enough and then we'll push the tire onto the wheel center and uh, try to get it set against the index and then we'll clamp it so it can cool and uh, while it's cooling we'll try to set up and get ready for the other side.
once it's on there, sometimes it takes a little bit of tapping to get it right. You, you think about it, it's a big circle. And if it gets cocked a little bit and you just got a little clearance, it could catch in one spot. So you, sometimes you got to do a little tapping with the hammer to move it on uh, to get it aligned properly. Once it's on and it's in the right spot, you clamp it in place because this thing's going to keep moving as it's cool. So we got to clamp it to keep it tight on that wheel center on the index, which will allow us to get the proper gauge when the whole thing's done. Once we get it all clamped and we're happy, then we pull off the ring of fire. So we'll pull that off and then we're set to start working on the other side. Meanwhile, that tire will cool, and at the end of the day, we'll pull the clamps off. One of the things that we have to do, because this is a tight fit between the wheel center and the tire, is we take the, the tires and we wire brush everything. We have to get all the rust. We clean them with solvent to make sure there's no dirt or grit in there because we want to get that fit just perfect. It's metal to metal. We don't need anything else in there. Same thing with the wheels. The wheels have a what you can see in there. There's casting holes, and they use those to add weight, and that's part of the counterbalance on the wheel, but a lot of them had like dirt and grime and stuff in them, so we clean that out as well. Water brush the entire outside of the, the wheel, and make sure it's clean also so it's it'll be a metal to metal fit with nothing else once we got that ring of fire off the tire that we just installed we go put it on the next tire and we got a special clamp that we built that we can clamp onto the tire to hold it and that's what we lift with uh, that was a project in itself, making that, getting it all welded up and drilled and threaded to what we wanted to do. So then that ring goes on and the clamps tighten down and then we pick it up. As you can see, they're setting it up on the, the stand to get ready to heat the second tire up. As we do all this stuff, we're very cognizant that this everything's big and heavy. It's kind of a problem with real railroads. Everything's big and heavy. And uh, so we got to be careful. We have uh, job meetings with the crew and talk about what we're doing. And everybody's cognizant of safety as we move things around. It keeps clear because we don't want anybody to get hurt in the process. As you can see, they're, they got the tire up and it's getting set up so we can heat it up. We also made another fixture, actually recommended from Stothy Papas who mentioned this would be a good way to do it. It's just a shelf and it bolts onto one of the, the wheel centers on the driving wheel spoke. And uh, that allows us to set that tire at the right height while it's heating. And then when it's done, we can shove it back onto the wheel center and it's all pretty much aligned, ready to go. We don't have to fidget with it to try to get it in the right spot to put it on the wheel center. So that that's a big help, and that's something that, uh, you know, one of the things we learned by talking to other people in the industry, we didn't just decide to do this. We, we talked to a lot of people that have done it before to get ideas of how to do it and uh, worked on our plan based on what they told us and what we got out here got a fire ring uh, around the tire we're heating that up and uh, the reason for the heat is the the tires are machined slightly smaller than the wheels that they're on so it's a press fit it's an interference fit uh, the the OD or the ID rather of the tires which is going to affix to the OD of the center 
that's inner diameter of the tire, outer diameter of the center, uh, are machined such that the tire is about 50,000 smaller uh, than the OD that it's going to be sitting on. And so you can either uh, overcome that with a press or with heat. And so we're obviously using heat. You can't quite see it. There's uh, oxygen or air rather uh, with propane mix. Uh, we light that. It goes around the whole tire. We heat it up. Uh, we check around, make sure everything's evenly heated. We want to get it about 300, 350 degrees. We can go a little hotter, but that, that seems to be working fine today for us. Uh, check it with a little temperature stick, uh, thermal cran, make sure that it's uh, the temperature we want it, it's evenly distributed. Sometimes we end up kind of having to cock the, the, uh, the burner around just to get even distribution. Uh, if you've ever, you know, cooked on a, a gas stove, sometimes you end up using too much propane uh, and, you know, get frozen up. So, you know, kind of a constant uh, monitoring and, and making sure that we're getting even flame and even distribution. Once the tire's as hot as we want it, we have several different sort of safety mechanisms to make sure that we don't lose it. Uh, there's a clamp that, that's held over the tire. The clamp is safety chained with an additional chain. And then it's also sitting on a little shelf, which is uh, bolted to the spoke of the tire. So we have three ways of keeping it so that uh, a burning hot tire isn't falling down on the people putting it on. So once it's hot enough, We'll, we'll, it, it, you know, the, the tire will be expanded and we'll use a little bit of all three, we'll use a little bit of the crane, we'll use a little bit of the shelf and sort of uh, depending on how easy it will want to be, sometimes they just slide right on, sometimes you need a little persuasion with a sledgehammer if it's something's cocked, um, but it's just about, you know, getting the ring uh, directly over the, the center that it's sitting on. Once it's on, we'll throw a bunch of clamps all over it. Uh, three is plenty, but, you know, um, just want to make sure it's clamped radially around uh, the the register and the register I think Alan probably talked about but the register is what sets the axial distance of the tire relative to the center relative to the other one so once the tire is seated completely against the register that'll assure us that our back-to-back -back dimension which is the back rim face of both wheels are within the nominal gauge which is what sets the gauge of the axle so that's what we're working on and uh we're heating up and, and we started about five minutes ago and hopefully we'll be ready to put it on here pretty short. These are temple sticks. We use these to check the temperature. This is a thermal gun which is somewhat reliable. But this one melts at 200 and this one melts at 350. You can see it melts. We're over 200, but we're not up to 350 yet. I'm Art Randall. I've been, been working on the 2479 for about 30 years now, since 1991. What happened to this thing is that the boiler plate in this area became distorted from a little too much pad welding, too many cycles of heating it and cooling it. So we decided to cut this patch out. It was done last uh, August. and. Uh, rolled a new piece of plate and then uh, the contractor when he came this time to reattach the boiler to the frame also trimmed this patch and started the stable holes the patch is this is like 5 8 steel and we had a uh, code welder boiler welder come in to uh, to make the well around there and so what we've got left to do is the top row of stays up there is, are, are going to be rigid crown stays and everything else, these are all flexible stays. And so what's left to do is install those and, and then ream the plate out so that the sleeves can be welded to it, install with flexible stay bolts, and that'll complete the job. Well, we got two tires on, so it was a successful day. We hope you enjoyed this video about work going on here at the Niles Canyon Railway in California.
on the Southern Pacific's 1744 a locomotive that we're restoring. This is just a small part of the project and we've been bringing you updates periodically through TSG so we will continue to uh, update you as we move forward with the project. We can always use help. As you can tell it's lots of heavy hot fun work out here. We all have a good time. We got projects for anybody, any type of skill set. You don't necessarily need to pick up big steel wheels like we were today. We got station crew, we got you can be on train crew, we got museum duties, there's passenger car restoration. You want a lot of exercise you can work on track. That's a lot of fun. So the Niles Canyon Railway can use your help. We're an all-volunteer organization. Any donations towards the SP1744 would be much appreciated to keep the project moving forward. And we hope you learned something. And if you have any questions, uh, certainly ask them on the, the channel there. And if John can't answer them, we'll get back to you. So thank you. and. Uh, Good afternoon from Miles Canyon Railway.